Well, hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this latest video. This one is looking at using Git in NetBeans and this is a, a mini-series about using Git in NetBeans and it isn't just for the web, it will work with Java, it will work with C++, it will work with any programming language that you can use in NetBeans. And this first one in the series is setting up a repository or as it's known on GitHub a repo. Let's have a look. Firstly there are two types of repositories. There's a repository which is local and that is on your computer. That's the one that's on your computer and it's the only one you actually need if you don't have an internet connection. You can have a, a repo on your computer and it's very good for history although NetBeans has its own history system built in and the other one is of course a remote repository and this is on something like github or bitbucket or somewhere like that mercurial that type of thing and you can then the, the repositories on your local computer and the remote computer don't have to be the same though it is fairly sensible that you actually do keep them in sync. They don't necessarily have to be synchronized. So what do you actually need? On the local computer, on your computer, you need Git to be installed and you need to have configured it with the global configuration, putting your name and your email address into it. If you don't know how to do that, I will put a link at the top for you and also in the notes below. For the remote you need a GitHub or Bitbucket or similar account. It doesn't really matter which one. And you need the account or SSH credentials. Now I'm going to be using SSH because I have that already set up. And again I'll put a link at the top on how to set up your SSH in GitHub and there'll be a link in the notes below. And of course you need NetBeans installed on your computer and it configured for whichever programming language that you're going to use or all the programming languages if you wish it doesn't really matter if you're using it for Java Java fine HTML fine PHP fine C++ it doesn't really matter which which one or which ones provided it's set up and available okay let's get started Right, so you can see we have NetBeans and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project and I'm just going to use one of the NetBeans sample projects and what we will do is we will use one of the PHP ones and I thought we would use the calculator PHP one so I've clicked on PHP calculator click next. I'm going to leave that as the project name okay so we've opened this up and as you can see it's created a web page for us to look at okay so let's come back to NetBeans and at the present time we've got it all set up and ready to go you can see there's a section called versioning here which says initialize git repository you can do exactly the same thing by coming up to team and initialize git uh, initialize repository so if we click on that so it's given us the, the root path we'll click OK and as you can see I've got the output window here and you can see we've got a number of messages so it is now actually set up now if you actually look at the tree view you can see we've now got okay, some little blue marks okay, and it actually says contains added modified or deleted files which means that they haven't been set up okay we can have a look at the files 
and we have a look at them you can see that they are in green which means that they've been added to the repository but they haven't been committed so they haven't they haven't been fully staged yet so let's just go ahead and do that so right click on calculator and come down to commit and click on commit and you'll see that there is a, a list of files to commit this information here was of course put in because it took it from your global settings when you set up git on your computer and because it's the first one just call it initial commit click on commit and as you can see it's actually gone in and committed okay and if you look these are now in black they're no longer in green so everything has been set up and it's committed but it's only on your computer at the moment let's see about setting it up on a remote side because each time you make a change let's have a look see if we can make a change somewhere here is the source and you can see there's a number of lines in here if we just add something in very quickly I shall just put another line in here tutorial and save that okay you'll now see that there's a green line to say there's been items added okay and you can see it's in blue right which means it's been modified okay so right click on it and come back down to git and then you can click on commit there is a set of keyboard shortcuts that you can do for the same thing which is alt and m which opens up the menu and then just press m again which opens up the commit and then you can put in a whoops comment now always put in a comment because when you come back to this in six months time you'll need to know why you made a change to a particular file or a particular set of files so always add a commit message and then click it and as you can see it's been committed okay and that's all there is to it now at the moment this is just local it's not on github at all or Bitbucket or whichever one you use it's just on the local machine so let's have a look at github uh, if we sign in okay right we've now signed in you can see I've already got some items in here and we need to create a new repository so you've got new you can start a project you've got the plus sign here so whichever one you want to do so let's just do a new repository and it says create a new repository so you need to give it a name so I'm going to give it a the same name as the project it's a very good idea to give it the same name as the project you can put a, a description in if you wish now because you've already got files on your local machine you don't want to initialize a readme you don't want to git ignore and you don't want a license so you can put in a description if it's a public one click public if it's private click pli private create the repository okay and here you get some information now if you're just using HTTPS just click on HTTPS and copy this line here I'm on SSH so I will copy that line there right next you come back to your NetBeans and we now need to set up a remote repository okay so git oops Right. okay let's 
to come up to the top one. Sorry, I have to be on the on the top. And as you can see, remote. Okay, and we're going to push this up to a remote repository. Now, at the moment, we don't have a remote repository. I use a master password system on NetBeans, so put in your master password if it's required. And as you can see, we've got a number of pieces of information here. So I shall put in the information there. It has my passphrase, it has everything else. And we're using a public private key, so click next. Okay, if I just go back, if you're using HTTPS, you'll need to put in a username and a password. I'm not using HTTPS, so I'm using the SSH system, which is much easier for me because I don't have to remember very much about it. And I can just leave this as it is. So let's go here. Now, the first branch that you create is called the master branch. And that's what we actually created. We haven't created any more branches. This is the master branch. And you have to tell it which local branch that you want to actually send up. And the A means it will be added. Okay, so I've put a tick. Click on next. And again, you can see that it's master. Now, the remote is always, well, is usually called origin, and I would recommend that you keep it as origin. You can change the name if you wish, but keep it as origin, and then just click finish. And if you haven't put in a password, you'll be prompted for the password. As you can see, it's created the branch and set it up, and I do want to track it, so I'll click yes. And again, we've got all the information here. Now, if we go back to the calculator sample and click on calculator sample, you will see that everything is here. And the README, which was included, is showing as the README. So it's actually, see, We've added tutorial and it's all in here ready to go and that's all there is to it we now have it set up and ready to work so every time you make a change to the project it doesn't matter what it is if you decide to make a change for example like that okay and as it's not a, a git tutorial by me so we'll save that okay again you'll see it goes blue and it goes blue which means it's modified so team commit Comment updated. Why is it? Oh, git. Ah, there we go. So, comment updated. You can see it's in blue. So, we'll click commit. Now, that will go black. Now, you'll notice that it's actually on this system here. It's on the local system, but it's not actually on the uh, remote system. Okay, so if you come down to where it says push, again you can actually do this from the command line. But if we go to and we'll open the repository browser, you can see. See our remotes called origin. 
and we've got branches local and remote and you can see here that the local branch is ahead of the remote branch okay remote one being origin master here so we need to push this up so again there's a keyboard shortcut for this which is of course alt and m to open up the team menu then press e which comes down to the remote and then press h and we'll get the same thing but notice that this time it's actually put it in the top here okay so we can just click on next make sure that master to master is selected click on next and then click on finish and if we come back to calculate a sample you can see it says comment updated so click on it see a git tool by j laval so that's how you set up a git repository in netbeans i hope you found that useful in the next video we'll look at cloning an existing remote re uh, git repository and putting it on the computer thank you for watching please like comment and subscribe my name's john and i'll see you next time